just stand to your feet one more time. Stand to your feet one more time as we welcome the senior pastor of this house, Pastor Derek A. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. Good morning, y'all. Maybe. All right. Have your seat. Have your seat this morning. Good morning. Um, I'm glad that y'all are here this morning. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask y'all to go ahead and uh, be sure that you look at the seat near and next to you. All right. And I need you to get to uh, using your faith and start talking to that seat. All right. So uh, if you need words, I'm going to help you. Say seat. I'll call you Phil. In Jesus' name. Seat. I call you anointed. In Jesus' name. Seat. I'm going to feel you myself next week. Now, somebody give God praise for it. Amen. All right. Now, we're going to continue in our worship experience this morning and with our offering. All right. So uh, if you're giving in the house today, there are several ways that you can give. You see those uh, on the screen. If you're giving online, link uh, come available for you to be able to give there uh, online. If you need an envelope, if you would wave your hand, one of the watchmen will come and bring you an envelope. We give you a scripture so that you can anchor your giving in the word of God every time we give because we believe that that's the best way to go. Then uh, we make sure that you are able to occupy uh, that moment or that space. So we pray and then we call uh, the worship team to give a, a short snippet of a song and then we pray and make our financial confession. And so today I want to give you the scripture that uh, we're Last week, I did the tithing scripture. Uh, this week, I'm going to give the, uh, the, the portion of scripture that we use so that you can give from your own heart, and that's found in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. I'm not going to read all of the passage, you know, 6 and 7, but I am going to read verse number 8, and I'm, I am going to read verse number 10, okay? So it's uh, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and we're going to read verse number 8 uh, and verse number 10. Now, these two verses... Or again, we give in our house according to Malachi 3 and 10 in terms of the standard and where uh, it is given. But we know that it was in Melchizedek that we get it started with Abraham. So last week we took you to Hebrews, the seventh chapter, and then we bring it at the beginning of the week according to 1 Corinthians 16 and 2. We'll do that one next week. This week uh, we give according to how we purpose in our own heart because we believe that God gives seed to the sower. So we want to give scriptural basis for that belief system, okay? So in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse number 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, <laughs> that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have abundance for every good work. All right? So who is able to make sure that you have, y'all? God. So my giving is the precursor, but God is the source. Got it? So all that I receive, I don't receive because I've tricked God or I've manipulated him. It is because of verses 6 and 7, according to how you purpose in your own heart. You give, all right? It's, it's up to you. Uh, everybody say it's up to you. All right. All right, but when, it's, when, when I'm in it, I understand that uh, God is going to give me the grace, whatever I, it is that I need, the ability, the uh, invention. This doesn't say that God's going to give you back money. This says he's going to give you the grace uh, to do and to accomplish that you'll always have. This grace is going to make sure that I'm always having, that I always have, that I always have. If you don't have the right mindset about that, you'll look at loss or you'll look at something you're losing and miss that, hey, I have all sufficiency, meaning that I don't know how God's going to get this done, but I know he's going to provide for me in such a way that whatever I need gets done. Anybody love God for giving you grace, all right? And this is not just something, this is all sufficiency, okay? So when you look up the word sufficiency, you will be sufficiently surprised that this is not God give me just what I need. This is all sufficiency in all things. And then it says, may have an abundance for every good work. So that means that when God does give it to me, if my mind, because good work, y'all, is ministry. If my mind is to please God and advance the kingdom, then God uses me as a distribution center in the earth. 
Okay, so what does that mean? That means that when my heart is fixed towards pleasing God, then God says, okay, I see that you are not, not trustworthy, that's a whole another scripture uh, altogether, but that you are mindful of kingdom responsibilities and projects. Therefore, I can trust that I can get it through you to where it's going. Amen. That's why we say we give through a church and not to a church. Well, that means that God is giving through a people and not to a people. But the people get blessed in the process. How many of y'all know that when you water your hose, if you cut off uh, the water supply, if you shake that hose out, it's still some water in there, right? So just because the hose was the distribution tool that the water came through did not mean that the water hose wasn't going to get wet either, right? Somebody ought to give God praise for getting wet as well, right? All right, so verse number 10, now may he, we're talking about God again, right? May he who supplies seed to the sower, that's why we see our finances as seed. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. So I got seed to sow and bread to eat. Too many of us are eating our seed like it's bread. I got seed to sow, bread to eat. God is able to provide both of them. Seed to sow and bread to eat. Meaning that when I set my heart for God's things, I, God, I'm going to give you yours because this is what I intended and I know you're going to take care of me too. I got seed to sow and bread to eat. Listen to this. He says, supply and multiply the seed. Wait a minute. He's going to supply and multiply the seed that is sown. In other words, God is going to take God is going to take what I use and then he is going to maximize its use. So you may look at what you're giving and go, hey, listen, it's not much. It's not up to you. God going to multiply that. Got it? All right, so he's going to multiply the seed sown. And then it says, increase the fruits of your righteousness. What does that mean? As long as I have my heart right or fixed towards God, God is able to make all grace abound to me so that I'll have sufficiency in all things and I have no lack in my life. Anybody want to give God praise for that scripture, right? Amen. So when you break these things down, it makes it much, much more easier uh, for us to to be able to take the principles out of Scripture and apply them to our daily lives. That's what Scripture is for. Uh, Be careful in trying to go, okay, I'm going to read that only. All right. Uh, Be careful saying I'm going to try to read that only, but miss the opportunity for the principle to reach out and grab you. If you got that, somebody give God praise for it this morning. Amen. All right. Now listen, you've already been standing, so I want you to just uh, sit where you are, sit where you are. Uh, If you need the, uh, the the bucket uh, is going to be passed in front of you. If you didn't get your envelope, go ahead and wave that. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to pray over your giving, and then we're going to make our financial confession, and then I will uh, I will have you stand for our, our faith confession over the Word of God. Uh, the worship team is going to sing a little bit longer, so I can go uh, and fix my microphone. Are y'all ready for that? All right, so uh, with your giving in hand, raise it real high. Those of you that are giving online, I want you to pray with us. If you're driving, don't bow your head. Amen. Amen. All right, Father, we thank you so much for every seed sown on today, for every gift that is given. God, we understand that those gifts are given from uh, their efforts that they have worked for, that you've given them the strength according to Deuteronomy 8. And so I thank you, Lord God, that because of that strength, we're able to provide for the kingdom of God through this local church called Amazing, and that we will do the kingdom projects and the assignments that you've given us because you have our best interests at heart. So today, God, we give you praise and honor. Uh, for the seed ability to even get it. May our hearts be a reflection of what we've sown. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. All right, on the count of three, let's make our financial confession and the worship team uh, will sing right after that, all right? One, two, and three, it says, Father, as I give in this house today, come on, according to your plan to bless my life. Come on, heaven open. Storehouses. Miracles, dreams, and visions. Angelic visitations, received declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointing, gifts, and calls. 
positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations to gather souls and more souls from every generation to help others become saved and set free, carrying a kingdom revival in every seed. I thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me so that I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and this house, amazing church. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Amen, amen. Hey, you mind standing up for me? Stand up for me. Stand up for me before I turn you into the hands of the watchman. I'm going to read one more scripture to you. And it's Deuteronomy 8 and 1. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. It says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which I swear unto your fathers. Every commandment which I command you to do this day, you must be careful to observe that you may what? And what? And go in and what? Which I swear to who? I'm telling you, I just can't get off of this legacy thing. And when you look at that scripture right there, it says, all the commandments I command you this day, shall you observe to do that you may live, go in, and multiply, and possess the land in which I swear unto your fathers. That you may live, not just a comfortable life, but a great life. That you may multiply, God is the God of multiplicity. That you may go in and take possession of the land that he gave unto your fathers. Now, I told you guys last week, and y'all were stunned that my great-grandfather came from Hong Kong. So you might just be thinking about lands that, you know, 40 acres in the mule. But I'm telling you, if you go back deep enough in your history, there are some lands that were promised to you that were sworn unto your fathers. Unless God started lying yesterday, I believe that his covenant commandments is still with us on today. And so there are some things that we are in covenant with with him that he says, I just need you to remember and take time and connect to the things that I swore into your fathers and pull them back from those generations into 2023 that you may live, multiply, go in and take possession of the land in which I swear into your fathers. So as you sow your seed today, I'm turning you into the hands of the watchmen as they are passing the bucket. Those of you who have already sown your seed on today and those of you who are putting them, I just need you to speak to that seed and say, seed, go to work. Seed, go to work. To it. That sounded really good. That big, that little, ooh. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do that, all right? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, before we go further, I want to go over a couple of the observations uh, this morning uh, for you. Those of you that are watching, we'll get something out to you on this week. Uh, but we have several observations that you need to pay attention to. Uh, the first one being that uh, our Becoming Man Summit is March the 9th through the 10th in Decatur, Alabama. Gentlemen, you should have received an email. If you did not receive an email, that's because you didn't upgrade your email in our system. So we want you to uh, go to the website, uh, do the member log in, and then upgrade your email, or update your email. But you should be able to go to the website. Uh, on tomorrow, we'll put something up so that you'll be able to register. You'll create your own trip uh, this year, but we're leaving on that. That Thursday and coming back on that Saturday for that weekend of March the 9th and the 10th. That's the Becoming Men Summit. All right. Uh, on uh, on March the 5th is Celebrate 8. We'll be celebrating our eight years uh, being uh, church here. Amazing. Amen. 
celebrate 8th, it's March the 5th, going to be a crazy day. Uh, A-team gathering, I'm calling an A-team gathering. That's if you serve in any area. If you're a greeter uh, on the door, if you're in the parking lot, uh, if you are in our, our media broadcast communication production team, wherever you are, uh, we want you to be here on this Tuesday at 7.15 p.m. I have some information to share with you. Uh, then on uh, March the 12th, as they are springing forward an hour, we're going to spring forward. That's going to be Spring Forward Sunday. We're changing our service times to 9 and 11. Uh, I was talking about 9.15 and 11.15, so y'all pray for me, but 9 and 11. Everybody say what times, y'all? Now, that doesn't change anything for our serving teams. They'll still arrive at those same times, but our starting time will be 9 and 11. So, uh, all of you that serve in the area, nudge your neighbor and say, man, I thought I'd go ahead and nudge him. Yeah, no, same time, all right? Uh, and then this Wednesday night, everybody say this Wednesday night. This Wednesday night is N42 Tribe Life, all right? N42 Tribe Life, that is where our young adults, 18 uh, to 34, that's where they come. They're going to meet. It'll be their time uh, here on Wednesday night. But speaking of Tribe Life, Tribe Nights, uh, on last week was our couples, and man, we had a blast, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm going to say this. Uh, I like them all. I love men on first. I love women on second. Uh, but that couples on third, uh, that was really, really powerful. We got four different things that we're going to implement, and I want y'all to get them all. All right? All right. So, uh, again, uh, March the 5th is Celebrate 8, so make sure that y'all are here to celebrate that milestone with us. Uh, one of the things that we want you to do is we want you to, you should have received a card today uh, so that you can write down the eight names of the people that you're going to invite on March the 5th. And here's the reason why. Because we learned that uh, for there to be a new beginning, of which eight stands for, there must be a complete ending. And so there's some things that need to end, but not just about your life, but about the lives of those that you love. And so I want you to write those eight names down. And when you have the opportunity, bring them and place them on the altar. I'm going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them. But we also want those names to be here with us. And so on March the 5th, I'm believing that on that day that we've designated a time to celebrate, that we're going to also break and end some things uh, because of this series, Holy, Holy, and what God is doing in our church. Uh, if you believe that, give God praise for all of the things that will break off and all of the new things that will begin. Amen? So, uh, who are your eight? We, I, want, I want to pray for them. Uh, we'll have a week-long series of events that very well may be capped off with a huge moment. Uh, that is for Amazing Church, but I gotta, uh, we got to get some more of that. We'll, we'll know more about that on this coming week. Uh, April the 9th is Easter at Amazing. Somebody say Easter at Amazing, all right? All right, Easter at Amazing is in person and online at This Amazing CH. So uh, what a day we got planned for you. Don't plan anything on that day except to hear the tried and true gospel uh, of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Uh, our team uh, has a request, and so I'm going to try to fulfill their request, but I'm not going to tell it to you until I decide I'm going to do it. All right? All right, all right. Before we get going, I want to thank all of you for joining us on today, those of you that are watching online and those of you that are here. Uh, thank you so much, and I believe, again, by the Holy Spirit that someone's uh, heart is going to be moved to join, to be a part, to become a partner of Amazing Church. And so, uh, as, as Pastor Cardell has told you, you saw earlier, there are some QR codes on the back uh, of your seats, and then there will be one at the end of the experience on the screens. Uh, if that's your decision, we're going to pray for you. You're going to have an opportunity to connect with us. But I want to make sure that you know that we've been praying for you and that we know that you're here. So, Amazing Church, can we, can we praise God now in advance for those that will be making a decision to be a part of our tribe on today. All right. All right. Can we give it up for the band as they depart and get on back? All right. So thank God for what a wonderful band, Pastor Dominique, because I mean, going at it right now. Uh, come on, appreciate y'all. Y'all go ahead and go. All right. I'm going to jump right into it. All right. Uh, this year is the year that we are to live a life that is holy, holy, right? And though uh, our name doesn't reflect the moniker of holiness in it, uh, but let me tell you, I believe that God is calling us to holiness. Amen? All right, so as we get ready to jump right into it, let's make our faith confession over our word. If you would, please stand to your feet this morning and let's get this thing going, all right? On the count of three, repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. 
I am a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right now, at this moment, I am alert and will not go to sleep. Today, I will be taught the word of God and I will be encouraged, edified, equipped, and empowered to engage in this amazing life. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you so much. You're so kind. You're better than what we deserve. You're better than good, but it's the only thing that we've got. So God, we thank you for being nice to us. Would you have your way in this experience? Would you do what only you can do? Through your word, God, may we be better. May we be whole. May you be glorified. And God, we promise you that we will give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise that's due your name. And it is in that name, the matchless name of Jesus, that we pray. And everyone said, hallelujah and amen. Would you do me a favor? Go high five two or three people and tell them, I appreciate you being with me this morning. I appreciate you. I like that. I like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As, as we said, that this is the year that we are to live a life that is holy, holy. Everybody say, holy, holy. holy, holy. And, uh, and as I told you, though our, our moniker does not reflect holiness in the name, uh, I believe that God is calling us to holiness. With revival breaking out in various places all around the world and right here in the United States, in various places and various universities. Uh, it is an indication that what God spoke to me is really real. Remember, uh, in, this, in this first part of the series, I told you I normally get a word from God in August, and that didn't happen. And then uh, October showed up, and I, was, I had problems. I'm like, I didn't have a word yet. And I didn't rush it, y'all. Even, even in revival, I, I knew I got a word holiness in October, but I didn't know what God was saying fully. And so I just didn't rush it because I believe in waiting on God. And I believe that that's where we got to be at this point. Don't be under pressure to try to make up something that sounds godly so that somebody else can feel all right. If you make no reputation of yourself, you won't have anything to apologize for. Just wait on God. For somebody in here, I believe that my lesson hadn't even got started yet, but that's the word. Just wait on God. Don't create it, don't fabricate it, don't make it something that it is not. Because if you do, you will find out later on that apologizing for what you didn't mean to do is worse than apologizing for something that you know you did. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. I believe it's important for us to house holiness, the holiness of God in our church. And that happens in our hearts. So uh, I want to finish the first of this four-volume series Everybody say four volumes? four volumes. Yeah, four volumes. God poured this thing out, and the title of it is Holy, Holy. So you might, you might hear this a while, y'all. Uh, our foundational text is found in 1 Peter, and we're using 1 Peter, the 13th chapter, uh, 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 13 through 16, and then the second chapter, verses 9 through 10. The first chapter of Peter, verses 13 through 16, say, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Uh, that word conduct means way of life, means to uh, overturn, to abide. That abide is, is overturning what used to be. Abide for many of us has been defined by what we use the word dwell for. Dwell means to sit, to, to rest. To, to house. But abide doesn't mean that. If you abide in me, then I will abide in you. It's actually God saying, if you're willing to overturn what you used to be in you, then I'll be willing to overturn those things with you and give you the power to do so. 
So this word here, he says, be holy in all your conduct is just reflecting back on the previous verse where he says that you did this, you obeyed your ignorant lust. Now that you have the revelation of Jesus Christ and righteousness, then make sure that your conduct reflects such revelation. If I say that I am a believer in Jesus Christ, let me not use saved and uh, and that with the burning fire filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me just use, I say that I believe in Jesus Christ. And I am, a, a, I am I'm saved. I, now I'm, I got it. I, I, I know your life should reflect that. Yeah. If your life is not reflecting that, then this is what that means. There's some areas in your life that you have not surrendered to Jesus Christ. Even though the work is already done and even though the price is already paid, you're still holding on to some flesh areas trying to get God to move in all areas of your life. He says, he who called you is holy. Also be holy in your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Verse number uh, chapter two, verses nine through 10 says, uh, but you are a chosen generation. He says, be holy because if you name Jesus, you're part of the family of God. You have been chosen. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people who once didn't have an identity, but now you have one. Who once were fatherless and motherless and, and without family, but now you are in the family of God, and God says, I'm good enough for all of those things that you think you don't have. Anybody glad who has already said yes to Jesus want to give God praise in this moment for being a part of his special family. In this marvelous light, and he says, you once were not, but now you are. He says, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This three-year period, remember these phrases, this three-year period has come to an end and now the work begins. This three-year period is specifically directed towards the pandemic years. The work of being whole, knowing that you have been redeemed in real time to live the life that was recently preserved. These are all things I'm, I'm, I'm giving it all to you so that you can have a succinct walk away on today. He says, you have been given, you have been redeemed over all of this time, over all of the talk, over all of the politics, over all of the, all of the nuances, over, over all of the conspiracy theories. You still in your right mind. You thought I was just talking about you didn't, you didn't die from the disease. No, you still in your right mind over these last three years and listen, being cooped up, cocked up and all the other stuff's up and you still standing up. You ought to give God praise for just being around, y'all. He says, he says, you were chosen to, 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 by God to be preserved for this time, a time such as this, uh, to, be, to, to have a more accurate description, to live holy, holy. For he that is holy has redeemed you, preserved you, and you will, you will be presented. You are to be presented to the nations for his glory. Uh, his word says, why are you saying this, Pastor? Because his word says in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verses 17 through 19, uh, why this is important for the body of believers, those that are called, those that have the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God. Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls, wow, to him in doing good as to the faithful creator. You have to go back when we just read the, the lesson in the first version for part one of this uh, in order to get that. I can't do it, but I want to, but I won't. Uh, I won't. All right. I won't do that. All right. So, so God is not only calling you to repentance, but he is calling you to be the remnant that can withstand judgment and scrutiny in the days to come. God has preserved you to be a historical example of what being holy, holy in the earth looks like. We were working on the defining of holy, holy, so we can all have a specific direction for our lives and the rest of our work here in this series. 
We redefine remnant as this, the, the remaining part, that which is left over, a small minority of people who will remain faithful to God, left behind, and so as to be saved and or preserved. We say that God is calling you to be holy, holy. And then we say that holy is the adjective, the descriptor. According to Merriam-Webster's definition, that means to the full or entire extent, complete. Everybody say complete. Complete. To the exclusion of other things, say solely. Solely. We say that the Oxford English Dictionary adds the noun version of it, that holy is to be in an unbroken or undamaged state. A thing that is complete in itself. Y'all, you've been through some stuff, and they cannot understand how you came out unbroken, undamaged, and complete. (laughs) You've been through some things that that should have broken you. You have had some relationships that should have damaged you. You have had some things that you should have decided that I'm not doing this no more, and I'm ready to go. Some of you should have been suicidal, yes, but some of you, you should have been homicidal behind what you went through. But God kept you whole. You were undamaged. You were unbroken. You are complete. If you're glad for somebody in here, God wants you to know that he didn't just redeem and preserve you out of it, but that he brought you out and will present you to the world unbroken, undamaged, complete, and lacking nothing. For somebody in here, I don't know who it is. And I I have the opportunity uh, to meditate on this passage of Scripture about Terah some more. Uh, Remember, you know him as Abraham's father, what I taught you on last week. I gave you the uh, the genealogy, Genesis, the 11th chapter, 27 through 32, but I'm only going to read verse 27. It says that this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and then Haran uh, begot Lot. We said that I believe that the reason why Terah did not get to enjoy his purpose and destiny was because he never got to a whole state in his life. After losing his son, uh, Terah was on this road to his destiny, but he never arrived because he chose grief instead of healing. He chose to grieve versus healing. I was going to design a a cross where Christ is the bridge and him standing with grief in one hand and healing in the other. And you standing in the middle with a choice to make. You will either choose to grieve or you will choose to heal. In fact, we showed you on last week where I was crying and I rolled on the floor. I hit the floor real hard. And then I was crying and rolled on the floor and hit the floor real hard. And we said that the same amount of energy and emotion that it takes for you to grieve is the same amount that it takes for you to celebrate that God brought you out. I didn't say that you wouldn't have sorrow. I said you don't have to grieve. You do not have to. And I studied it. They got grief care. They got grief counseling. They got grief. There is grief everything to help you understand what you're going through, not to to help you stay in what you're going through. Amen. Because once I get understanding, I should be free from it, right? So I get to choose to be healed because I say that on that same cross, we read Jesus, he for our griefs and carried our sorrows. That means that the work on the cross was done aforetime so that when I came up to this situation in time, I can look to the cross and go, Jesus paid it all. I hurt, but Jesus paid it all. So all I need to do is mourn with them that are mourning. But weeping may endure for a night and joy comes in the morning. Through my mourning, I should find some joy. What is that joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I know how I feel, but I gotta go with joy. I know what this is like, but he has given me life and life more abundantly. I can't stay here. I got to go here. All the whole people in the room say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Too many relationships never make it to where they are going because someone cannot get past the pain. Yeah. They can't get past the loss. They can't get past the death of a dream. They, can't, they don't have the ability to abide, to overturn some things. Terah was on his way to a destination, but he got stuck in the memory and live the rest of his life in that pain-filled memory. So for 
for us to understand is what if we were not supposed to get over what grieved us, but we are to show others how to thrive and live in spite of what happened. Meaning I know what happened, but now that I have understanding through, through the proper care of somebody working on my head, I'm able to, in the midst of what happened, still enjoy it. Listen, y'all, I, I wish I would have put it up on the screen, but I didn't have the forethought of mine. Last night, I'm laying in the bed uh, with my wife and my daughter, and, uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> my daughter is a daddy's girl, and she's pregnant, and so she was already in the bed, and so I got in the bed, and I turned on the TV. My wife was doing some of her own work, and then so my wife loves my daughter. They like to play, so my wife jumps in the bed, so she's fussing at my daughter who's already in the bed, saying, you can't be in here. I feel like I'm trapped, and so I was in the bed with my wife and daughter. We were playing. Y'all got it? All right. So, <laughs> but... Uh, just like most of y'all, when you're in the bed and you got your phone with you, uh, I was scrolling, right? And so I got to Facebook, and my cousin, Tangela, uh, uh, Reva Shane, uh, she put a picture of her daddy up there, who just so happened to be my favorite Uncle Ray Page. Oh, y'all. My uncle was so cool and so cold. He was the baddest man around. I was a skinny kid. I went to the park, you know, to play basketball, and nobody would let me play, you know, but because I was was raised nephew, they had to let me play. <laughs> so I played because I was raised nephew. They said, come on, Slim. That's where I got the name Slim from. I uh, was from my Uncle Ray. Uh, my Uncle Ray uh, died early. He died, I mean, he died in his 30s. And, uh, and it hurt so bad. We went to the funeral and I couldn't, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it that he was dead, gone. My grandma was crying. And my grandma wasn't, my grandma wasn't just a crier. You know, like, ooh, ah. No. My grandma cried out loud. Ray! It's like, oh my God, I can't take And she did that for like five minutes. And here I am, I'm 10 years old. I can't handle it. I don't know what's going on. That's the last time I cried at a funeral. Because from that moment on, I went, that is incredible. That kind of pain. I don't, I don't know why I'm feeling it. I can't, I can't do this. You're, I ain't supposed to live with this. And from then on, I went, I need to understand what death is. I need to understand why this happens. Why did this happen to Uncle Ray? Once I found out why it happened to Uncle Ray, I went, okay, I, yeah, that, yeah, that's what's going to happen. You know? Then I went, okay, I need to handle the emotion because my grandma was in such pain. How can I stop that from happening? And so then I just studied and learned. So then I, once I found out what death is and why it occurs and it's a part of, of life, and then in my salvation as I got mature, I realized that, wait a minute, we should be crying when babies come and, and laughing when people leave. You know, now I got a full understanding. But because people don't want to let go of what's present, they don't want to overturn, they don't want to change, they stay right here. And so if your life is lived like that, when death occurs or when something happens in your life, you will remember more of the pain than you will the joy. Yeah. And you'll live in pain-filled memories versus happy, pleasant, joyful memories. Yeah. If you're glad that God said something to somebody that you know, not you, give him praise for it right there. Amen? <laughs> Tara was on his way to a destination, but he got stuck in a pain-filled memory. We're supposed to thrive in spite of what happened to us. And, and so for those that cannot forget what happened, I say, choose to live in spite of what happened. And so how do you manage this moment? You are given the answer in the very next chapter from Genesis 11, uh, 27 through 32 in Genesis 12. Uh, in the very next verse, God tells, tells Abraham, get out of your country, leave your father, and go to a land that I'll tell you. If you don't want to repeat the mistakes of your father, if you don't want to continue in this life of grief, you have to make the choice to do these three things. Number one, we say, get out of your feelings your thoughts and judgments. Number two, you got to break from your past, your generational iniquities, shared offenses. And then you've got to trust God. Somebody say, trust God. Trust God. This is not believing now. This is, this is faith. Uh, confidence that you know that you know. So today we have to get to the balance of our definition so we can move further in this series on next week. So let's go back to our foundational text to get our definition for holy, all right? It says, therefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children. Not conforming yourselves to your former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, 
you also be holy in your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. We say that holy in this passage of scripture, which would be in the Greek because it is in the New Testament, is hagios, sacred, blameless, or religious. Uh, the most holy thing, saint. We say the concise Oxford English Dictionary defines holy uh, as dedicated to God or a religious purpose, morally and spiritually excellent. To be holy according to what God says here through Peter required, we said, for us to go back to where uh, Peter got this because it was going to be in the Hebrew that we would get the full meaning because Peter is quoting a scripture and not giving a prophetic revelation. And so the passage that he is quoting from is Leviticus, the 11th chapter, verses 44 through 45. And there Moses was writing about the consumption of things, what you ate and how those things that you ate were unclean. And if you ate something that was unclean, it made you unclean. And then if you were unclean, because you being unclean, you couldn't touch anybody else that was clean or else you would contaminate them and make them unclean. And so that's how the law worked. And so if Peter is taking his holy from this passage of Scripture, then we would have to define or apply that. This word holy in Leviticus is kadoshe, meaning sacred, ceremonially, or morally. So it's similar, very similar. And then it means also clean. That's where you got cleanliness is next to godliness. Did y'all know that? All right. Somebody say cleanliness, cleanliness. is next to godliness. So clean up. Clean up. All right. So he said clean, <laughs> consecrate, dedicate as a command and not a request. It was a command. So Peter is referencing a command to be holy. And you're being holy based on what Peter was saying. He says be holy in your conduct based on what Peter was saying is that you can't just think of you when you're doing this. Because if you consume, based on what he said, something that was unclean, then you became unclean and everything that you touched became unclean. Yeah. So that means that you need to be holy yeah. because if then you are holy based on his conduct, then you being holy and everything that you touch will become what? Holy. holy. So that means that I have to live a life in such a way that when others look at my life, they won't get contaminated by what I do, yeah. but they will get cleaned by what I do. Yeah. Y'all, okay, y'all work that, I work that. All right, so, so I got to be whole because if I'm reserving my right to, to hold on to things that are satisfying my flesh versus releasing those things and walking in my righteousness and being holy, then it is the flaw in my life that will be magnified because people gravitate toward the pain versus the joy. That means the flaw in my life, that thing that I don't think anybody sees me doing, but God knows, the hidden thing, the generational iniquity, the quiet thing, the stuff that I'm doing that is not pleasing to God, that is what's going to be magnified. Yes. That's what people are going to watch. Yes. That's what they're going to repeat. Yes. Here it is. You praying and calling on God. You serving and you, but the thing that you do that is unholy yeah. is what people are duplicating. Yes. Yeah. So holy, holy is I've got to be holy. So let's give you the total definition. To be entire Holy, holy means to be in, holy, holy means to be entire and complete, not lacking anything, independent of any other thing, unbroken and undamaged, sacred, blameless, and set apart for a religious purpose, consecrated physically, morally, and spiritually dedicated to excellence in God. Somebody give God praise for the full definition of understanding what holy, holy is. Can you give him praise for it one time? All right. So let's close this up. You are the remnant of God in the 21st century with the call to be holy, holy. And God has commanded us to live holy, holy. He kept you here for this reason. Like Moses and Peter, I am sent to command you to live holy, holy which means that you will live in such a way that when exposure comes, remember that? How you handle your exposure will determine when and how you expand. When exposure comes, whatever kind it is, you'll be able to handle it. The judgment 
and the scrutiny without having any lack in any area in your life. So remnant of God in the 21st century, you are called to be holy, 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 holy in your existence, in your physical body, morally and religiously, holy, holy in your exalting, in your praise and in your worship, how you praise God, the way that you praise him and how you worship God. You're called to be holy, holy. You can't even praise God fully if you're not whole. Did you know that? Because you're carrying around something that God, you, you're trying to praise him, but you got something else on your mind. That's why people come into this building and give God glory in the room, but go out there and still act like hell. Because you are still holding on to something that's keeping you unclean. Woo! You have to be holy, holy also in your expression. When I am holy, holy, I walk around with power. That power is reflected in my presence. My presence is filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gets to the people before I ever do. Why? Because I'm whole. The insecure person will become even more insecure around you to the point where they will try to draw you into their insecurity so they can be comfortable with your presence. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing tribe. Yeah. You have been in a trial over these last three years. You should give God praise just for him being so kind to you and making you a part of the holy, holy remnant. Somebody give him glory for it in the room. And But hear me now, before, before I close the door on this lesson, I want to go back to a promise that I missed on last week that you got to get. I need you to know that being complete, whole, being complete or whole does not come without a promise and the promise does not come without trial. And so we took you to James 1, verses 2 and 4, and it says, My brethren, count it all joy. There it is again. Yeah. When you fall into various trials. Yeah. There it is. Knowing. Somebody say knowing. knowing. That's the confidence. That's the faith. Yeah. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what, y'all? Patience. But let, and what's patience? Patience is doing what you know to do. Even if it doesn't look like it's working, keep on doing it. Yeah. Patience is doing what you know to do. Even if it don't look like it's working, you what? Keep on doing it. Here it is. He says, but let patience have its perfect work. I was, I'm supposed to be, pull it down, pull it down. <laughs> but let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. Lacking nothing. That you may be what, church? Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Say it again. That you may be what? Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. People that don't have no trials don't have this promise. People that's trying to avoid them trials are saying, I don't want this promise. <laughs> he says that those of us that are believers, this is James talking, the brother of Jesus one of the disciples that walked with him, he says, this is a part of the deal. And the reason why this is a part of the deal and you should celebrate it is because I can testify that after coming through, I'm, com I'm cool with it. I'm complete. I'm not lacking nothing. I ne I've never seen the passage as a promise as much as I've seen it as encouragement and faith to keep going. And well, here uh, we are. <laughs> and, and we the best God got. You should have celebrated that right there. Here, here we are, <laughs> and we're the best God got. And he said that what you went through was so that you would have no lack in any area of your life. And so I'm believing that in 2023, we will have no lack in any area of our lives. You got to believe that. So can y'all do me a favor? Can you do better than that? Can you give God praise because you made it? You were considered by God himself to be selected by what you went through. You thought that you went through something because of mistakes, but you were selected to go through so that God could develop something on the inside of you. So all that I went through was so God could work something on the inside of me. God, you could have chose another way, a better way. You didn't have to choose, but God is working something on the inside of you. You thought that you made it because of a vaccine. You thought you made it because it was a mask that you wore. 
You thought it was a part of isolation, yet you saw people die with the vaccine, die wearing a mask, and people on their own, in their own home, minding their own business, died. No believer, listen to the word of the Lord. You are here because you know God did. No, you can't take the it out of it. Somebody say, God did it. What is it? God saved me. Who did it? God did. Deliver me. Who did it? God did. That set me free. Who did it? God did. Made me whole. Who did it, y'all? God did. Call me holy. Who did it, y'all? God did. Heal my body, y'all. Who did it? God did. Heal my body and told me to run on. Somebody ought to give God praise in this room today. He's calling you to be holy, holy. Sit down, sit down, sit down. He's calling you to be holy, holy. So pastor, why did you go through the whole lesson? You, you taught this thing. Why did you go through the whole lesson? Because I needed you to understand and I need you to get the promise of God here in 2023 with complete and succinct understanding before I go to the next volume. And that is that you are to be complete and lacking nothing. And that you need to look at your test and trial. Look over it again. You got to see God as all knowing and understands. But you got to see that you still here is the fulfillment of a promise. That scripture is being lived out in your life right now. If you got it, somebody give God praise for it this morning. Amen. Come on, give him glory for it. It's about eyes are closed, nobody's walking and nobody's moving. It's important for us to, to hear and understand. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Those of you that are watching online, I want you to participate as well. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed in here, there's somebody in here, you came today and you say, listen, I, I looked at everything that I went through and I was more overwhelmed by it than I was in a place of peace and so I want to pray for you I want to pray for you as I pray for me because I too at moments in time I question God and the trial while in the trial I, I'm like where where why why when when <laughs> yeah what is this I'm a believer I, 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 I serve you. I live righteous before you. Come on. I tithe, God. I give over and above. Why? Why? What is, what way? So, Father, I thank you today that we, we were able to hear your word fully without interruption and without too much input. That you clearly know what you're doing in us and through us so we thank you for the opportunity today to be able to be gathered around your word and fellowship and to grow thereby god for all of those that are here and those that are watching today live god i pray that they understand and will be holy holy full complete undamaged unbroken not lacking anything and that will give you praise for it well, heads about and eyes are closed if you're here today and you haven't said yes to Jesus and you know that today is your day that you came to make a commitment. I found that there are many people that go to church but not, not committed to Jesus Christ. They're committed to their church or to their pastor, but they're not committed to Jesus. We want you to know now that that's, that's not how you get to the glory. Do you need a church home and a pastor? Yes, because the scripture says that, that I have to answer for your life. If, if a man will sit and answer for the lives of other people, then it must be some connection to the people and the man. We want to get you to Jesus. And the way that you do that, the scripture says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for you, that's the gospel. If you believe that gospel, then you, through that confession of faith, you are saved. And so I want to pray for you. If you're here today and you hadn't said yes and you want to, you're saying, Pastor, that's me. When I count to three, would you please slip your hand in the air? One, two, and three. If that's you and you're here today, this is the moment. This is the moment. Don't let anybody else around you, don't let anybody else that you see that's watching, that's on the thread, don't let them stop you. 
If you're watching online and that's you, I want you to, you know, put in your comment section, that's me. That's me. And our moderator is going to comb through those comment sections. They're going to find you. While heads about and eyes are closed, you're also here and you're saying, listen, uh, I said yes to Jesus and I really do believe in my heart that I am saved, but I am not living accordingly. In fact, I got some, some of that unclean stuff that you said that I want to get rid of and I want to, I want to rededicate my life for the rest of my life. I want to come back to Jesus and the family, the kingdom of God and live righteously. If that's you and you're here, this is where it all matters. This is where it all matters. I want you to stop being a billboard for the enemy and I want you to stand up and stand for righteousness in Jesus Christ. If that's you and you're here today and you're saying, I'm, re I'm rededicating my life, I'm, I'm doing it today. When I count to three, I want you to slip your hand in the air. One, two, and three. If that's you and you're saying, I'm doing it today, I'm saying yes today. Today is my day. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you. If that's you and you're watching online, please put in the comment section, that's me. That's me. Our moderator is going to comb that and find you and we're going to pray with you and pray for you. We're also going to send you some information so that you'll be able to walk this out. And now finally, I've already prayed for you, those of you that we've prepared all week, we've studied, we've, we've not only prayed, we've rehearsed, we, we cleaned up the place too for you. <laughs> so that you can come in and say, I want to be a part of Amazing Church. If you've been visiting with us or, or you're, you're saying, hey, listen, I'm, I'm coming home. This is my church home and I want to make that permanent. We want to make sure that you know what your next steps are. So if you're here today and you're saying, I'm partnering with Amazing Church, the Word of God says that when you're planted in the house of the Lord, that's where you flourish and that's where you bloom. So if that's you, when I count to three, I just want you to slip your hand in the air. If that's you on today, one, two, and three, you're saying, I'm joining Amazing Church. I'm partnering with Amazing Church on today. I'm no longer visiting. I'm not a visiting member. I'm a partner. If that's you and you're watching online, I want you to put in the comment section, new partner here. That's what I want you to write in there. New partner here. And our moderator is going to comb through, find that, and we're going to find you. And we're going to reach out to you and connect with you. You can partner with us digitally because there's so many things that you can do with us. You can participate in all the things that we do. You can make sure that you're online and going to church fellowshipping with us. And then when it's time for us to serve and go and take care of our community, you can do it right where you are on behalf as a partner of Amazing Church. So yeah, you can partner with us and do some of those very same things. And so we love you and we thank you. Listen, everybody that's here, let's stand to our feet. Those of you that are watching, we're going to make our faith, faith confession. We're going to pray these prayers and make sure that nothing is lost. We don't lose none of the harvest. Amen? So everybody repeat after me. Say, Lord God, Lord God today, today I give you my life, you my life for the rest of my life. Of my life. I, believe I believe that Jesus is your son, Jesus is your son that he died for me died. and rose again. Rose your word says the word that by this confession, by this of my mouth, out of my heart, I am saved. Lord God, today I rededicate my life for the rest of my life. Your word says that you're faithful and just to cleanse and to forgive all unrighteousness. So today I receive your forgiveness and your cleaning now. Lord, I partner with Amazing Church. Your word says that when I'm planted in your house, that's when I flourish and that's where I bloom. I give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give God praise for all of those decisions today? Come on. Y'all can do better than that. All of you that are online, thank you so much for it. Listen, if you made any of those decisions today, whether you raised your hand or not, but if you made the decision in your heart, or you're visiting with us for the first time or second time, please find this lovely young lady waiting the VIP guest sign. She's going to take you to the heart of the house where she's going to meet you along with some of our other great guests and leaders so that you'll know not only that we love you and appreciate you, but we'll give you next steps as well. For those that are not and you're going home, have an amazing week. I love you, and we'll see you next week. Y'all be blessed.